What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods Expert Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So, last episode, we were trying to figure out the Shaga thing, our lesser Shaga down here, Fluffy, how to get Fluffy to erect one of those monoliths. So, as it turns out, <laughs> I was doing it wrong. Yeah. So, I was going through the book for Abyssal Craft, the Necronomicon. And in there, it talks about the Shoggoth and that you need six of them in a 32 block radius in order for them to create those monoliths. So I was like, okay, no big deal. So I went back to the swamp and I was there trying to find them and I couldn't find another one. Then I went and I looked on the map. I was kind of like, okay, so these things spawn in swamps. It says they spawn along rivers and all these kinds of things. So I was looking around. And I did see it. There was another one somewhere over here. <laughs> I flew out to it. Now I don't see it on the map. It was like on the very edge of the map when I went over that. You know what? I think I have a waypoint. Let me, it is on. It should be red and I don't see it marked anywhere here. Oh, right over here. Yep. Yeah. All right. So over here we have another one of those swamps, the uh, Corallium infested swamp. And yeah, there was another Shoggoth layer here. So I was like, cool. And I went in there. Let's go check it out. Actually, I'll fly over there real quick. So again, I was like, cool. There is one of these Shoggoth layers here. Let's just go ahead and pop in there. Maybe we'll find a Shoggoth that we can capture and bring back to the base. Well, the thing I didn't realize about these layers previously is at least this one has a lot of Shoggoths in it, but like where those Shoggoths are down there, there is something called Shoggoth biomass. I do believe see how those blocks are different color. So each one of those blocks down there, I believe, is a spawner for these lesser Shoggoth things. Uh, I don't know if they just spawn one and they stop spawning or what the deal is, but the fact that there is so many that close in the layer, yeah, they will start producing their monoliths. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so if we hang out here long enough, we'll just see that the monoliths get constructed, but that's not what we're going to do. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so since a lot of them spawned, I had some soul vials that I brought with me, and I collected a bunch more of these guys. All right, let's get out of here so we can just have a moment of peace. So I have Fluffy, our original Fluffy, then Fluffy 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So we have six of these lesser Shoggoths that we can put together and have them erect our monoliths, which is awesome. Anyway, I put all six of those into this pen here and I was sitting there and watching them and within just a few seconds They started making like hammer pounding sounds like they were doing something and sure enough monolith started being erected here So we got two new statues Yeah, so I think that one on the end and this one over here are the two new ones It seems like they have to be a block apart. They're right next to each other. They don't seem to be charging anything So I have them spaced out like that uh, But the thing is like as soon as they start spawning these different monoliths, I guess they place down more of that Biomass stuff like we were getting the Shoggoth spawning all over the place here. You can kind of see there's a little bit of uh, Cobblestone missing there from where a monolith was put up but yeah, like there was a bunch of them spawning like out here and all sorts of things like that. I was able to kill them all. In fact, I even had one that kind of like went over here and went outside the fence and was just hanging out. I had to clean up all of the ooze over here. But yeah, it seems like once they start constructing monoliths or whatever, they start spawning a whole lot of these guys. And it just seems like it's going to be bad news. So I cleaned it all up. I removed them from here. But I still want to show you guys what this looks like. Uh, so where did I just set up a thing? I set up another one out over here outside of the base area. Um, I think this should be far enough away that it won't be that big of a deal. I hope. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and put these guys down in here and I'll show you guys what it's like, what these guys look like when they're all together and they start doing stuff. I think four of those should be okay for now. Uh, so we'll place one here, one there, one there, one there. I'll go ahead and get out for a second so I can figure out what I'm doing. All right, so we get the little lip on here so these guys can't escape. They act just like spiders, right? So we'll place another one there and another one there, and we'll get out. All right, so we got six of these guys together. Yep, see, look at that. So almost instantly, they just erected one of these things, which is pretty cool. So we can get ourselves another one of these statues, but now the problem is they can climb up and out because <laughs> of that 
monolith thing. Yeah, that's kind of a problem. So now we got to get rid of that. Uh, whoops. Yeah, it is very difficult to try and navigate around these things. I guess we can kind of destroy this a little bit, make it harder for them to escape. Uh, another thing we could do is just grab our soul vials and get these guys once again. That's probably the best thing to do right now. I'll just go ahead and pick these guys back up, get rid of that monolith, and we'll all check it out again. Come here, Fluffy. So this time, it doesn't look like they spawned any additional ones. When I did this before, they spawned like two of these very, very quickly. Yeah, and then they were creating more and more of these guys, like, in a short amount of time. Oh, I hate... Do we hear another one? Yeah, there is another one out here. Okay, so there is another Shoggoth out here, and this is just a lesser Shoggoth. This is not one that came from us. And in fact, there's another one over there, too. Okay, so we can kill these guys. Man, they do a lot of damage, don't they? Uh, let's go ahead and find our food here so we can recover our health. Yeah, there's another one that spawned over there. All right, five of those in our toast. All right, let's get rid of this other guy. Get wrecked! Cool, all right. So, yeah, I don't know how they end up spawning. Is it like when they erect one of the monoliths, they just spawn more? Or what? Yeah, see, there's another one that just spawns somewhere. I can hear it. Oh, it's inside. Yeah, I don't know how these... Yeah, there's, two, there's three of them. <laughs> I don't know how these guys come to be there's like something that's spawning them in and i'm not exactly sure what it is uh but anyway this is why i wanted to move this away from the base because i had an issue like this happen when i had them over there they started uh multiplying and they're getting all over the place and it's just something that i didn't want to deal with at the base i can imagine if you let them go they'll just start multiplying multiply and take over everything and wreck these monoliths everywhere so yeah, you got to be kind of careful with these guys. Anyway, let me go ahead and clean up this mess real quick. Get rid of those guys, and we'll see if we can get them to do a few more monoliths. All right, guys, so we got all six fluffies back in there again. They're all together. Uh, just been in there a few seconds, and again, sounds like they just produced a new monolith. So I don't know if they can just keep producing them. Like, I never let them just sit there and continue to do things before, because they... Had some monoliths generated at the base. I was like, okay, cool. Let's stop this so we can do it together. So it sounds like they just made a second one. I wonder if all six of them will just go ahead and make monoliths here in like almost no time. Yeah, it looks like we got two more. Well, actually, I only see the one monolith. Okay. I'm not seeing... Oh, yeah, there's another Shoggoth that appeared over there. Oh, man. And then they... Made some over here. Okay, we should probably shut this down, I think. Come here, Fluffy. Yeah, I don't really want this to just take over everything. That'll just be silly, right? I'm sure there is probably some kind of a cooldown on these guys where they can't just keep making these things. But I definitely don't want... Uh, <laughs> I definitely don't want to uh, get the overrun by these guys. Alright, so we're missing a Fluffy. Are you Fluffy? You are. Okay, that's the original Fluffy. Cool. So we got another lesser Shoggoth in there. We have some extra of these stones around. This guy appears to have just spawned, like, right here. I don't know what causes them to spawn. If they can just spawn on this ooze? Or if they have to be, like, ooze next to the monolith stone? Or, hmm... Yeah, there's a lot of these things I just don't know. Yeah, that guy just spawned and there was nothing else there. He spawned next to the... Whoa. My health. Yeah. Ugh, gotta get out of here. Let's get our health taken care of real quick. And toast. Alright. Oh man, there's just so many of these guys in here. All right, so we got to figure this out, <laughs> what we're going to do with all these guys. Uh, I almost feel like lava would be a good choice to get rid of them. I don't know. They do a lot of damage. They take a lot, or they have a lot of hit points. 
Wait, that's Fluffy too. Fluffy five, four. Oh, we have a regular lesser Shoggoth here. Oh my goodness, so many guys. Okay, well I tell you guys what, let me clean up this mess. <laughs> it's gonna take a minute. Let me get rid of all these guys and we'll be back. All right, well that took a minute. We got it all cleaned up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we ended up, oh, actually there's one piece of this stuff left, there we go. Uh, so we ended up with getting four additional statues, in fact, I think we had a fifth one that I put back in the ME system when I went back and recharged my wand. Uh, so yeah, we got a bunch of these different statues now, which is pretty nice, and that's gonna allow us to charge our Necronomicon that much faster. Now, people were giving me warnings in the comments about those events that we were seeing that the Necronomicon was causing. We saw that there was an explosion, lightning, uh, they were causing those shadow monsters, the beasts and things to appear here. Uh, in fact, we just had another explosion just a little bit ago before I started recording today. Um, yeah, so it seems like people are saying that it can also cause the biome to change and turn into like one of those abyssal biomes in like a certain area. I kind of don't want that to happen, not near my base. Uh, so it is suggested that we pick these up and move it to a different spot to do the Necronomicon charging. And I think that's a pretty good idea. So the energy pedestal here so it has 5,000 PE, so this is completely charged up. Our Necronomicon, I don't remember exactly where I put that. Is it in here? Maybe? Yeah, and that's completely full as well. So both of these are done. Uh, so we can go ahead and move these statues out of here. Yeah, I'm kind of not liking the fact that they cause explosions and damaging my base. They might have even ruined one of my water mills. I don't remember if I had another one here or not. But anyway, let's go ahead and move those out of here. So I think what we'll end up doing, let's take a look at the map real quick. We'll probably head over to, yeah, over this general direction to the east. Um, look at the mini map that's north this way. Yeah, so we'll head over here around where I put the mob trap and all that kind of stuff. This area, I don't really care about. We could just stick it right here. Uh, this should be just fine. So we'll put the pedestal here. I really don't know how close or far away uh, these statues need to be. Uh, but I do... Well, actually, let's not do that. I am pretty sure that they have to be at least one block apart from each other. So, yeah, I don't know if we can put them like this. I don't know if that works or if they just can't be right next to each other or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, so, whoops. Uh, for right now, we'll just go ahead and place them something like this. I'll put some on the other side as well. And then if any explosion happens or biome changing happens or anything like that, it doesn't really matter because right not, it's not next to the base. It's over here, right? So this should work pretty well, I do believe, for charging up things. Oh, you know what? This one's too far back. Right there. Yeah, so now we got a decent amount of those, and I do believe we have at least one more, if not more than that, that we can put over here and get things charging. But yeah, I think that's going to be pretty good. So in the future, when we need stuff done, that's where we're going to head to. I think that's going to make a lot of sense. So we don't get our base ruined. I did end up collecting all of our fluffies back. Uh, I think number two has a little bit of damage removed, but that's fine. If we need more of those statues for any reason, we can definitely get more Shoggoths. And as we saw before, just by putting those six together, more spawns, so we can always make a new fluffy number two, should we need to do that. All right, we'll put all that stuff away. Uh, off camera, I did end up upgrading our discs over here. Uh, these are all 4K instead of the 1K. Yeah, I spent some time, actually, I think it was before last episode, making some quartz glass. That's the stuff we have to do in the alloy smelter over there, and that takes a while. Um, so yeah, I upgraded those so we have more space over here, which is pretty nice. But yeah, I think what we should do is take a look at what we need to do to continue on with the blood magic. So, uh, let's see. Blood magic, we have the blood altar. We can hear blood altar. Did I put that in my bag? I put it somewhere. I thought I put it in the system. Okay, I put it here. We have this one. Right, so we have the basic blood altar. We were going to make the first blood orb. 
I believe is what we were trying to work on. Yeah, so we needed the Shard of Oblivion, which we already have crafted. And in fact, we should be able to do this. Now, to get blood into our blood altar, we need to get ourselves a sacrificial dagger. Yeah, this guy. So that requires a shadow gem, a vile sword, which is corrupted ingots. Did we already make a vile sword? Is that what this is? Yeah, so we had made a vile sword, but I'm not going to use this one. Because uh, it has all of our <laughs> good things on there. So let's go back and take a look. So a vile sword is made with a corrupted essence and vile dust. I don't know if we have any of this stuff extra. Let's take a look real quick. We don't. We don't have any of that stuff. So what does it take to make the corrupted essence? Right, so that's diamonds, side dust, crushed emerald, obsidian, ash pile. I do believe we have stuff, most of the stuff, ready to go for this. Uh, tell you guys what, let me go ahead and finish up the recipe. We'll try and get two vile ingots created. We'll make that sword and we'll take our first steps into blood magic. Be right back, guys. All right, guys, so that wasn't so bad. We have two of our corrupted ingots now and we should be able to make another vile sword. Cool. So now we got that done. Uh, sacrificial dagger requires some mana glass. We already have that made and shadow gem, which we have plenty of. All right, so there's a sacrificial dagger. Now, in some mod packs, this is not a thing, and you have to do the sacrificial orb or something. It's essentially the same thing. You place on your blood altar, and you right-click this on yourself. It uses some of your health and turns that into your LP or the, the blood for the altar. I'm really not sure where I want to put this thing. Uh, the, the blood altar, that's the tier one. Tier six is going to require like a 23 by 23 by nine area. It's kind of large. And it's one of those things where like when you start off with blood magic, once you get past tier one, you want to put it in the spot that you're going to put your tier six altar. I think we do need, what was it for the, um, the draconium ingots? I think that was a tier five. Yeah. So we need a tier five altar at least to do this. Uh, so yeah, we're going to want to set this up in a proper spot. We're going to have to figure out where we're going to put this thing permanently in the future. But for right now, we should just go ahead. We right click that it takes a little bit, of a little bit of our health and adds LP to the altar. Uh, we can't tell at this point in time how much is in there. And there is a way that we will be able to, uh, see how much is in there in the future. Actually, you know what? I guess I'm incorrect. Thanks to J E or not J E I. Uh, whatever that is, the one probe, I think is what the tool tip is. It shows you what's in there. So that's really nice. Previous to this, you'd have to use, um, I can't think of the name of it. It's one of the things from blood magic. Why can't I think of it? It is the sigil something or other, and I can't remember which one divination sigil, this thing. This is something we're going to want to do. So it looks like we have to do an alchemy array with a blank slate and a redstone to make this thing. Yeah, I can't remember how this all works. It's been a while since I've done this and I've only done <laughs> blood magic in 1.10 once. So there's a little bit more stuff that I'm going to have to look at uh, in order to get uh, reacquainted with this. But anyway, we'll start with the weak blood orb. So that requires 2000 LP. We need the shard of oblivion. And we have 1.6 in there. Uh, let's go ahead and eat a little bit more food real quick. Get our health back. So, yeah, it looks like that's done draining into that separate tank. So there's the main tank for the blood altar. And then there's a separate tank where it drains an extra 1,000, or I guess the full bucket of life essence into that you can't see through this tooltip. Uh, so anyway... That is done draining, so we everything that we put in there now should just stay in there. So there's exactly 2,000. I'm going to have to eat more berries. We'll probably have to look at upgrading to better foods here pretty soon. I know I've been doing the whole berry toast thing for a while now, but it's getting to the point where it's kind of bothering me that we haven't upgraded. So, yeah, it's definitely a thing we'll have to look at. Uh, so shard, there's that guy. We'll have to make some more of our teleportation anchors around here. Anyway, uh, so you should just be able to right click that in there. It'll drain all of the life essence out of the altar and it does that at a certain speed. You can speed that up with speed runes and things. 
when you get to the higher tiers of this altar. But for right now, it's only going to go at this one speed, and that's kind of slow. Uh, but once that's done, that should transform this thing into our first tier blood orb. You know, at the very beginning of today's episode, I noticed there was like this little moon icon on me, and I still don't know what that's from. <laughs> yeah, I can't figure it out. Like, if I take off my dark steel armor, it's still there. I think something marked me. I'm not exactly sure what. And I'm not sure what that means. So if you guys know, let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, this thing just finished up right now. So we have a weak blood orb. Uh, we have to right click that in air, which will take a little bit of our life, right? And put it into our LP network. It'll also assign this to us, current owner hypnotized. So now this can be used for things that we need the weak blood orb for. You can place that into a blood altar. If you have blood in there, it'll suck up the blood, put it into the orb, which will put into your LP. And then you can use that for the other things in blood magic. Uh, eventually we'll automate that so we'll have an orb that's always filling up our LP but for right now uh, we can just use this for what we need it for so the next step is if we want to progress through blood magic we are going to need to get ourselves some runes uh, the runes are what you use to define the next tier we need eight of these for a tier two and in order to get that we're going to need some dark stone pulsating propolis vial of crimson shade other world leaf i just looked a little bit ago and we have like 23 of those so we should be okay but we might need more and we're also gonna need blank slates blank slates are made in the blood altar with a thousand lp using dark stone dark stone you just mine in the world that's not a big deal we should have plenty of that but it is going to require a thousand lp which means we are going to have to keep our health up yeah i might have to look at potions of regeneration or something along those lines uh, so let's see what else do we need for that. That might be a problem. Yeah, the vial of crimson shade Botanical brewery. This is the thing that we haven't had to make yet. So let's look at the recipe for that uh, I think I use this only once in regrowth I think so this is gonna require some living rock mana steel a block of that a rune of mana So that's mana steel and a mana pearl. Yep. So that's not so bad on what is that the uh, runic altar? That's pretty simple stuff. Spellbinding cloth from Batania, which is mana weave cloth wrapped around a mana pearl. Mana pearl, you just throw it into the mana pool. It's easy. Mana weave cloth requires mana infused string. So four string equals one cloth. So we are going to need 16 for one of these. So a total of 32 of those <laughs> for all of these. So that's string put into the mana pool. All right, that's easy enough. Uh, basic cutting fluid comes from blood magic. Basic cutting fluid requires an alchemy table. All right, so <laughs> let's look at that. An alchemy table. And the alchemy table requires the orb that we just made. All right, so I guess this is our next stop, alchemy table. So let's go make one of those. And then we can place that there. All right, so that does not use our orb. Pretty much, as far as I remember, everything in Blood Magic that requires an orb for the recipe does not consume the orb. All right, so now we have an alchemy table. Let's go set that over here by our Blood Magic stuff. Guess I'll just put up against the wall here. We'll find a better place for this eventually. Oh, that places it that way. So I want to place it like this. All right, so let me break this and replace it. There we go. Alchemy table. All right, so we got a bar here. We got some slots. If we go back into the recipe for the cutting fluid, it shows the orb and this. So what is this bar? We put the orb here. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on Blood Magic. Like I said, it has been a little bit of time since we last looked at this, and I've only done this once, so I don't remember everything about it. I guess that would be under Alchemy, right? All right, well, I'll tell you what. I'll go ahead and go through the book here, see what we need to do to get our basic cutting fluid made. Was there anything else we should look at? An incense altar? So that's just cobblestone, stone, charcoal. That's pretty easy to do. And yeah, the basic cutting fluid, water bottle, plant oil. So we'll have to figure out that. 
The plant oil is also made on the alchemy table. So bone meal, two potatoes, bone meal, some wheat. Uh, can we use any of the tier blood orbs for this? Yes, weak blood orb. All right, so yeah, a few ways to get this. Let me go ahead, go through the book, figure out how to use this table, and we'll be back, guys. Man, oh man. So I was sitting here trying to figure out all this different stuff that we need to do, guys. Uh, so I was able to figure out how to get the plant oil. That's pretty simple. I was just using two wheat and bone meal in the alchemy table here. So some things work, some things don't. <laughs> Anyway, so let's do this together. So two wheat and then a bone meal. And then we need this guy right there. So that is using some of our essence from our LP network. We still can't see what that information is. And I don't know why those two things are red right now. Uh, anyway, I was trying to figure out why that recipe wasn't working uh, for making the cutting fluid. So we need coal, gunpowder, redstone, right? So coal gunpowder, redstone. Uh, we need sugar in here. We need a water bottle and then we need one of these plant oils, right? So placing the blood orb in there was not allowing this to work before. And I couldn't figure out why. Apparently if you go in here, basic cutting fluid, it doesn't say anything other than you need the blood orb and this recipe to make the cutting fluid. If you hover over the recipe here, though, it does say that it drains 1000 LP. And I just now realized this after spending, I don't know, 30 minutes going through the book and trying to figure out what it is that I was missing. Yeah. So that is what you need to do is make sure that you have LP in the LP network for the blood orb to make this happen. Now it even need, it even needs uh, LP for the plant oil, this stuff right here. And that costs 100 LP as well. Okay, so what am I missing here? I'm missing the plant oil. And you can see nothing's working. This is what I was facing for a while. I was like, huh, so maybe something needs to go here. No, no, we just need enough LP in the network for this thing to work. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have the divination sigil, so we can't really see how much is in our network at this point in time. So we pretty much just have to guess. <laughs> uh, in order to make the divination sage sigil, we are going to need, did that not eat? Not even re recently. Uh, we are going to need, uh, a hellfire forge, which I think is what I had planned for this episode originally, but I kind of forgot about it. So we'll make that next time. We're going to need that in order pr to progress. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and just right click this a few more times to fill up the orb. I tried putting the orb over here in our blood altar and it doesn't seem like it wants to fill up from the blood in here for some reason. I think this might have to be a tier two before it'll fill up this orb. I'm not exactly sure why it's not working, but now if we put that in there, that should work. Yeah. And that'll drain a thousand LP from our network that we still can't see, but it's there. That's where our health is going <laughs> at the moment. So yeah, then I'll end up making the other cutting fluid that we need here. Other than that, it's just a few more things that we need to do to get the rest of this stuff going. So we can go ahead and craft the rest of this stuff up right now, I do believe. Oh, you know what? We need that orb, don't we? All right, so this should be done. We have that. Let's go over here. Place that there. There's an incense altar that we need. Also, I was reading up some information about this. Uh, this will increase the amount of LP you get when you use the sacrificial dagger, I do believe. Uh, so that might be something that we'll have to look at making for the future for uh, filling up our blood altar. Okay, so that's done. We're gonna need the rune of mana, the mana steel. We've seen how to make all this stuff. I'll just go ahead and craft the rest of this stuff up now, and then we'll be right back, guys. All of that botanic crafting took so much mana, guys. I took some time here while letting our endo flames do their thing very slowly. I took some time here to make ourselves a mana lens here composite one between velocity and potency so yeah the lens is not that bad to make it requires a rune of air and a rune of fire we already had an air maid we needed a rune of fire for something else that i was crafting anyway so we got that made and you can combine those together into a composite using a slime ball so that takes the mana that's in the mana spreader and shoots it out faster and more at a time so it's a pretty much the best upgrade you can get for a mana spreader that's collecting large amounts of mana trying to put into a mana pool. So yeah, I made a Gore Morales as well. This flower will take food. 
You can just queue it on there. If there's any food nearby, you'll eat it. Turn that into mana. And yeah, that just sends a lot of mana over into our mana pool. But as you can see there, it only goes for about two and a half, three seconds. Yeah, it produces a lot of mana very quickly off food, but for a short amount of time. But it's way faster than these end of flames go. Huh. So anyway, we'll have to set up a thing in the future to make this automatic. We'll have to get a lot of food together in order to feed this flower or multiple of these flowers, depending on how much Batania we have to do. I'm honestly not sure. So I didn't want to automate any of this stuff at this point in time. But yeah, so I got those two upgrades made here. And we should have everything together now downstairs to make ourselves. Why is that not showing the recipe? It was showing before. Now it shows... It's weird if I click off, it doesn't show, but if I do that, it shows. Oh, why is it, why can I not click that out of here? Oh, that is very weird. Uh, so cutting fluid, incense, altar, spell bunny cloth, mana, living rock, mana steel. Will it not allow me to craft that in this crafting table? That might be a thing. Let's go ahead and take these maybe upstairs uh, to the Tinker's Construct station that we have here all right so we'll put these together like a so hopefully it'll work in this one cutting fluid cutting fluid and alter wait a second why is that not working that's everything that's in the recipe isn't it spell binding cloth root of mana basic cutting fluid 16 out of 16 incense altar Living rock, man of steel, living rock. I don't get it. <laughs> that should be everything, but this recipe is not working. It shows, it showed for a second and then it's gone. What the heck? <laughs> okay, well, we have everything together for the botanical brewery. I'm not exactly sure why that isn't working. Hmm, I'll have to play around with that for a little while to see if we can get that recipe to function. We can see that it shows up at some points, but it just won't allow me to take it out of the thing. It might be some kind of a uh, error with the, the changed recipe or whatever. I might end up just taking those items, throwing them away and spawning in a botanical brewery. We see that's the correct recipe. Things just aren't working. I don't know. But anyway, guys, we've ran out of time for today, so we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here again. Uh, yeah, if you guys know, once again, what this moon thing is on my chest, let me know, because I am curious about that. I'm not sure what that means. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.